Well, yeah, the question, you know, what would I say to young animators? I will be speaking, of course, as a, as a dinosaur, you know, as a, as a 40 year grizzled veteran, a seasoned veteran, or a, a washed up hack. I'm not sure which of those it is, but um, uh, I don't totally know how good my advice is, but I certainly still am a firm believer in drawing, even in this world of CG, that I feel like knowing how to draw is a good thing, and that most young people who are doing anything in any sort of visual aspect of the movie, of uh, uh, gaming or movies, if they're communicating in some way that involves an image, uh, and, you know, and they're not just a writer, or, and I mean a writer is great, but I'm saying if you're somebody that's communicating visually, whether or not you're an animator, or even you're a rigger, you're a modeler, you're doing surfacing, you're doing lighting in the CG world, or you're doing hand-drawn animation, storyboarding, character design, um, I think drawing is a good skill to have just to communicate your ideas to other people. You really, I think, can be so much more ahead of the game, even if you're in the CG world. If you can express your ideas quickly in a drawing, even if you're thumbnailing, this is what I want to do with what I'm doing right now, and showing someone else what's in your head, as well as just having a lot of the skill sets that uh, a person who draws knows, namely ideas about clarity, about staging, about perspective, about uh, expression, about gesture, uh, all those things can get wrapped up in drawing. So I would still recommend to most young people I would talk to, try and become the best draftsman you can be, given what you want to do. But uh, so that, and so that is a very broad thing, but that can involve keeping a sketchbook, uh, you know, doing figure drawing classes when you can, uh, drawing from a television, drawing the people you see around you, uh, various online courses you can look at that can help, uh, you know, supply you with uh, things to draw and lessons about drawing. Um, so that's certainly one thing. Um, the other thing, it's, it's sort of a weird, tough thing, but I would say, um, don't be defensive about your work and show your work to other people. I think the more you can, uh, part of your job in any aspect of this business very likely is going to be, you are going to be producing some form of artwork, whether or not it's drawn or it's CG or it's anything like that. And it is going to be shown to someone for their approval. And you have to get used to the idea of showing your work and taking criticism for your work. Sometimes the criticism is unwarranted, but many times it is warranted and you have to start developing a bit of a thick skin enough that you can kind of distance yourself. I, I am my work, but I am not my work. My work is one thing, I have something else. So, and you have to learn how to take criticism and to be, to be uh, open to those kind of ideas and suggestions. Even to the extent, there's a very simple one, which uh, even like when I used to draw, I was so self-conscious about my drawing, sketching, I couldn't go out in public and sketch because I'd be so intimidated about people looking over my shoulder, seeing what I drew, and oh, what are you looking at? And you know, do you like this? I don't know if I like it. I don't really like it either. Um, I've gotten over that now. Now I draw wherever I go, you know. And, and I think it's a good skill to have. And, to, and just, and it's like you know what? Really, those people they may look over your shoulder, but they sort of don't care. You're really in your own world drawing. It's you and your subject, and it's it's a fun pursuit and it's a discipline. And, and you have to get used to, to uh, criticism. And the other thing that I would say is you have to learn the difference. And it's an ongoing thing always. There's a couple of things, but it's um, a young person in the industry. What you have in your head that you're trying to communicate and what other people get from what you're communicating, those are not necessarily one-to-one. -one. They're not necessarily the same thing. So you may be convinced, this is what I'm saying. How could you be hearing it any differently? I can't say it any plainer than this. And then it turns out when you're in a medium like we work in, storytelling, filmmaking, games, any of those things, sometimes what you're sure of you're communicating is not what you're communicating. And you have to develop, a, basically be open to the possibility. And you get that even by showing your work where you say, did you get that? Or what did you get from what I just did? And they say it back to you. And it's not what you think you said at all. And so you have to learn that there is a difference and that communication is a big part of what you do, whether or not it's in a drawing, it's in words, it's in a design, it's in uh, any of those things. And you have to start analyzing, if people aren't getting it, where is the problem coming in? Where, what aspect of what you're doing is not communicating? In storytelling, uh, it's a little bit, you know, we have trouble with a roof in our house. and. Uh, we had a flat roof. You should never have a house with a flat roof because they, you know, the water puddles and you get a leak. But 
the leak often doesn't come where the puddle is or where the source of the problem is. The water's getting in over here and it sits under the roof and it runs and it comes out over here. And stories and films can be that way too, where the, the spot where the leak is is over here. But the real problem is actually over here where you didn't set up the story idea or you people, when you make a film or any of these artworks, um, the movie is like a train and you have to get people to get on the train with you. And if you don't, they're still at the station and you've gone well down the tracks and guess what? They never got on with you or you didn't realize it and a third of the way in the trip you did something that dislodged them and they're sitting next to the tracks back there and the train is still rolling and to get them back on the train may be impossible at that point. Maybe that you just can't. So you've got to make extra sure that as you're leaving the station and as the track is roll, train rolling down the track, they're with you because if they're not, uh, you may never get them back. I'm rambling, but there's, uh, there's at least one other thing, which is um, an essential idea. Again, young people, this is a more broad thing, but when you, when you are trying to communicate and it doesn't, there's some problem there, you have to figure out, in storytelling, this is sort of a storytelling note, is the issue with the idea itself. The idea itself is flawed. There's something about the idea that doesn't work. Or is it your communication of the idea that doesn't work? Like I'm not articulating the idea very well. The idea is sound, but there's something that's getting in the way of my idea. Whether that's a conflicting thing that sort of neutralizes my idea, there's, or there's a confusion, there's a clarity issue, or there's something else that's just like it, or there's a something that's the thing that I want to have impact if it's following something that actually has more impact, and so I can't get this to have enough impact without taking this back down so this can relatively be bigger than that one. All those things you have to take into account. But there are times where the idea itself may be sound and it's just some issue like that. But there are other times where, no, there is something in that idea that doesn't work. And until you fix the idea, these other things that depend on the success of that idea will also not work. And that's just an ongoing, every project you run into those things, you have to evaluate those. It's easy to lose your objectivity in any of these long-term projects like I do, but even shorter-term things, television shows, games and that, animation, you can get in the weeds kind of and lose your objectivity. So whatever you can do to help restore your objectivity, to see it from outside yourself, showing it to people, getting reaction, getting feedback, even very informally, I think it's just a, a great helpful tool. And the corollary thing to all that, be your own worst critic. Don't uh, be open to criticism, but but be hard on yourself. I'd say somewhat. You don't. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to be. You know, I'm good enough, and I'm. You know, I'm all this self affirmant. Uh, you'll get some of that, but really, just challenge. Is what I'm doing. Here's things that I like and I've admired, and that I think really communicate. You don't have to duplicate that stuff, but does your stuff work as well as that? Do you? Are you communicating your ideas as effectively as you think you could? What could you do that would be stronger? How could, what could I do that will clear away some of the stuff that gets in the way of my idea coming across? The more you can do that, I think, the quicker you will improve your own work and you will increase your value in the marketplace to the people that hire you because you have a more objective uh, you know, way of looking at your work and other people's and you have a, tools with which to analyze your own work when it, it is bumpy and it is not quite succeeding. That's a very long answer, I'm sorry.